So first things first on the boat trip, we go out and we pick a spot and we anchor. After that, the students test the um, physical and chemical characteristics of the water. And uh, after that, we go trawling. Once the trawl's aboard, we dump all the organisms on the deck of the boat, and then we sort through them. Boat. Oh, we got a stingray. Mm -hmm. We got a lot of crabs. A squid. Yeah, we got a squid. Yeah. It ain't. <laughs> But during this time, it's almost constant activity, constant learning, and constant hands-on experience with organisms that they've never seen before. So it's a real great team building and trust exercise right there. Okay, so these are our horseshoe crabs. These guys are not feisty. All right. For intertidal, we go to the National Wildlife Refuge on Estique Island, and we go to Tom's Cove. We go and we do quadrat observations, and we specifically uh, like to stress the adaptations of organisms and vegetation. Uh, after that, we do some seining to see what we can catch, as well as some sieve boxing for more of our benthic uh, creatures. Oh man, I did not expect there to be that many fish in the water that we were no, just that examining. All I saw were like, snails and little clams. I didn't think that there would be a lot of fish. My favorite part about the intertidal trip is where we explain the periwinkle snails, uh, which are able to sense vibrations of the tides. You can actually hum to the periwinkle snails, and they will actually emerge from their shell. Each one of these bowls represents a certain organism. So five minutes using teamwork and being very careful with these glass bowls, you're going to organize them. Right. Go ahead, so go ahead, talk it out. For org lab, we're split into two different sections. We have micro lab and then we have macro lab. Really what we're focusing on in micro lab is the plankton that we capture out in the field. And we have them create their own slides and they get to look at some of those zooplankton and phytoplankton under a microscope. And macro lab is when we deal with all of the bigger organisms, the, the fish, uh, the sponges, the red algae, green algae. Uh, any of the big stuff that we can hold in our hands, we go through and talk about that in macro lab. Yeah. I've never held a squid before, so it was yeah. cool. And we got to pick it up and uh, the texture of it and the um, squishiness of it was really odd to hold in real life. They get a bit more of an appreciation for how difficult it is to differentiate between species and how important it is to make sure we have uh, an accurate way of telling these species apart from each other. Hurricane Sam. Hurricane Sam's coming through. Three, two, one. Oh, damn it. So we get to take them out to Wallops Island, which is great because it's a private beach and we're really able to teach the kids and show them how the environment looks without a lot of human impact. Once we're out on Wallops Island, we get to take the students through the dune succession and they get to experience it all firsthand. They all get to do a dune building exercise which is one of my favorite exercises. <laughs> um, we built dunes on the beach and that was really fun. And we saw that the mature dunes would hold up best during a hurricane. Afterwards, we let them explore the beach because it's a great place to find shells. Where else are you going to go to that nice secluded beach and get to see the dunes so well other than Wallops Island? That beach out there is always changing. So every time we go out there, there's something new and different to explore. And it's always a great learning opportunity for all the students and kids that we bring out there. What is a forest? <laughs> the, the sky should be, on average, 60 to 100 percent covered by the canopy at any point, at, uh, on average. So the whole point of the maritime forest trip is to teach them about the end of dune succession. We'll start at the head of one of the trails, and from there we go through the forest and we learn uh, the different levels of the forest. We focus on trees and learn about the, the layers of the tree within the trunk. And we end up at the lighthouse and we, sometimes we get to walk up to the top of the lighthouse and it's, uh, it's a great experience. As we progressed down the trail we learned about the floor, the forest floor, and the canopies of the trees and the species that grow in this particular area and the invasive species as well. My favorite thing to do is probably the, the tree dance. Each different layer has a different purpose within the tree and uh, by the end of it everyone is is yelling their different, their different phrases and their, their whole different chants and it's this big, crazy, dancey, singing mess. As a teacher, I've been bringing my students for 30 years now. It's, it's tough to teach this um, uh, in, the, in the lab or in the classroom. Hands-on education is the best way to learn something, so the kids are constantly busy 
with their hands, they're constantly engaged, and to me that's the best experience for them. They're seeing the actual ecosystem in action. I've seen some students definitely come out of their shell uh, being here, and not just the science and doing hands-on things, but also being together and being themselves. I was just surprised by everything that we got to do. Your hands are on, your feet are wet. And this is not just a classroom, you, you go out on the boat, you go out into the tides. You get to actually get your hands wet and muddy, and I'm definitely really liking it. Make sure you take a lot of showers, or else yeah. you'll smell really bad, because uh -huh. it's a little gross. <laughs> but it's fun.